instead of being like oh it's so life-changing and it is it is but you don't need to overcomplicate it hi i'm just tricky welcome back to my channel in today's video we're going to answer all the questions involving super pubic catheter and chronic illness in general to start with, I just want to say, obviously, these are my opinions and my answers to these questions from my own experiences. I don't speak for our whole community as a whole. I speak from my experience with a super pubic catheter and multiple chronic illness. The question that I get asked a lot, which a lot of people might find like a bit trivial, is can you swim with a super pubic catheter? Yes, you can, unless you've been told specifically by your doctor not to, you can swim with a super pubic catheter. Now, obviously, when you're in a swimming pool, you don't want a long tube on display, so there is a couple of options that you can use. So you can use a belly bag, which will literally just go under your swimming costume or underneath your swimming trunks if you're a man. Um, or you can also use a leg bag if you want to rock that. Why not? Like... It's honestly preference. If you have the confidence to do that, do it. It makes no difference. Um, and the other one that you can use is a flip flow. Now, I personally don't use flip flows. I didn't get along with them. They caused me a lot of pain, a lot of spasms. So I'm not pro flip flow, but you can use them when swimming. Another thing that's handy to have when you're going to swim in with a super after is an antibiotic cream. Now, this has to be a cream that's specifically prescribed for the use on your super pubic catheter don't just use any antibiotic cream that you have that's not wise <laughs> um but yeah like i always end up having a back stock so in my medical storage i have an antibiotic cream specifically for flow which is my super pubic catheter um just there in the case of an emergency you don't have to put an antibiotic cream after you go swimming but it's a nice bit of reassurance another thing you can use is gauze now I do not recommend using gauze 24-7, nor do I recommend tubey pads. It's a naturally sweaty area. It's not meant to be covered 24-7, so you actually can cause an infection by having those things. So, mm. but in the case of swimming, a gauze can come in handy. <laughs> Question number two. Now, I get asked this a lot, and... It makes sense to ask this. Can you fill your super pubic catheter 24-7? Now, my answer is no. I cannot fill flow 24-7. The only time I do fill flow is if I have a spasm. Now, I personally don't get a lot of spasms. I do high assist installations, which temporarily replenishes the GAG layer in your bladder. It kind of makes that extra barrier. So like, spasms and stuff aren't usual for me. I also use a Cantera patch, even though I don't need to use them as much because I do hyacis. If you're interested in hyacis, I did do a video, go check that out. But yeah, um, my Cantera patch is an antispasmodic, which is meant to help the spasms in your bladder, which obviously the tube is not meant to be there, it's a foreign object in your body, so it can cause spasms. But as long as you have a good antispasmodic, honestly, it's okay. But when it comes to like the sight, and like me sitting here, like I cannot feel flow. It honestly doesn't feel like it's there at all. Um, obviously, the only time I do recognise, like remember she is there, is when I go to pick up my bag. That is it. Literally, that is it. I do find if I use leg bags that I get more spasms, even when I use high assist. Question number three, bathing. Now, I use both the shower and the bath with flow. I've not noticed any really big differences than before. Um, all I will say is, to begin with, if you're getting in a bath, make the water cooler than you would usually have your bath. To begin with, if you are getting in a bath and you've just had a super pubic after place, I highly recommend making the water lukewarm. Do not make it hot hot. <laughs> it doesn't that would be a bad idea. Um but over time you can build up that heat in the bath. You don't have to have cold bath forever. Um 
The other thing I do recommend is to use a night bag with a long tube to drape this tube over the side of the bath. It is honestly like having a bath without a tube. <laughs> I did find when I used a leg bag in the bath, it gave me spasms and I can't speak for a flip flow because I don't use them. Now, I personally don't use products in the bath, so I don't use bath bombs, I don't use bubble bath, all that sort of thing. They can irritate the super pubic cavity site. However, if you put a tiny, tiny, tiny bit in and build it up, you can obviously put a tolerance to it, but it's a personal preference if you find it worth it or not. I have used bubble bath since I've had flow, now this was two years after placement and I had no problems whatsoever. I have washed my hair in the bath that flo has been in, no issues there. Um, I've used soap obviously, no issues. So yeah, it's personal preference. Obviously if you have mass cell activation syndrome etc you're going to obviously have issues with different products. But I recommend trying to use natural products if you're going to put them in your bath. But for the most part, you can use anything. I personally use Femme Fresh to wash around flow. Now, if you are a guy, don't be, like, scared because it says Femme and it's feminine. It really doesn't matter. If you're using it to wash your site and it doesn't hurt you or it doesn't cause irritation, then go for it. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's just the soap that's got feminine on the front. Now, there's a lot of conspiracy theories around Femme Fresh and... There ain't anything to do with me, but what I th then go for it. <laughs> Honestly, it's it's just the soap that's got feminine on the front. Now, there's a lot of conspiracy theories around Fembrush, and there ain't anything to do with me. But what I find is it is very helpful around a super pubic cavity, especially if you're using it for shaving and stuff like that. Again, if you're a man and you're wanting to shave round just use it it's literally soap it doesn't matter but yeah i highly recommend friend fresh and i've used friend fresh from the start with flow <laughs> question number four do i recommend tubey pads now i am sorry for any companies that make tubey pads and anyone who absolutely loves them i mean they're really cute they're pretty designed but they're not meant to be there. It is a naturally sweaty area. No, I don't recommend them whatsoever. I have had, I think, three site infections in two years with flow. And people go, wow, have you only had three? That's insane, I have one once a week. Do you wanna know what them three were from? Two was from gauze at the very beginning, and one was from a tubey pad. Now, gauze and a tubey pad are very similar. They're a material that stops it from breathing. It has to breathe. It's almost an open wound. So, yeah. Do you know when you're, like, younger and your parents or your grandparents say, oh, take the plaster off, let it air out? Yeah. <laughs> because it's, not, like, it's a bacteria breeding ground if you don't let it air out. It's... No, you wouldn't have a plaster down there if you didn't have your super pubic catheter. You don't need one because you do. Honestly, when I first started, I was petrified. I did put gauze on a lot at the very beginning. And I, t to be fair, for the first week, yeah, go for it. Like, you have to adjust. It's a tube that's coming out of an area that, like, you're kind of like, that shouldn't really be there. Um, and it's worrying. You're like, oh, is it going to hurt? Like, all this sort of thing. But speaking from someone who's had a super pubic catheter for two years, over two years now... I don't feel flow in my underwear, like, it, there's literally nothing, you don't, there's no feeling there, it's like the tube is not there, unless obviously you catch it, and then, woof, but, yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you don't need to have the security blanket of a tubey pad or a gauze, it is literally just there, it's gonna cause more issues than it's gonna solve, unfortunately, but... It's personal preference. If you want to do it, you do it. But, like, you have to take responsibility for the potential site infections. So you have to, again, is weighing up. Is it worth having a pretty little circle or square piece of material for a site infection? 
some people are gonna hate that I said that, but I said what I said and it's the truth. <laughs> on swiftly before I get shot by the super big captain community. Right, next up, cleaning. Again, a very, very big topic. Now, when I first started, you look on Google and it says, oh, you clean twice a day, extensive cleaning, all this sort of thing. That gave me an infection. That is part of the reason why I had an infection. Excessive cleaning is a no-no. You're going to end up putting an infection in there. It sounds silly, right? You're like, how's that possible you're cleaning it you're excessively cleaning it you're using cotton pads or you're using cotton whatever you're using like you could use a baby wipe but excessively cleaning it you're risking every time you do it an infection there's a reason they have sterile protocol in the hospitals there's a reason they don't go ah bugger it you go clean yours i'll go off to the desk you want to know my cleaning routine for flow I get in the shower, I get in the bath, and that's it. I don't excessively clean. If I have excess gunk, for whatever reason, I use a baby wipe. That is it. And I use a sensitive baby wipe if anyone is wondering what brand I use. Literally, just a Bob Basic, 50-something pence baby wipes pack from Asda, which is the equivalent to Walmart for anyone in America, and I don't know anywhere else. But, um, yeah. So... It's not really that, it's not that deep. It's really not that complicated. It doesn't need to be that complicated. You need it to fit into your life as much as possible. You don't need to completely dramatically change your life. And that is why I get on the flow instead of being like, oh, it's so life changing. And it is, it is. But you don't need to overcomplicate it and you definitely don't need to give yourself more obstacles or challenges. <laughs> six going with this one is gunk now a superior catheter is a foreign object in your body doesn't matter if it's surgically placed or not it is still a foreign object in your body it is not actually meant to be there it's there because you need it to be there so your body does create gunk now when i first went into having flow i was told oh there'd be so much gunk no. Now, some people get more than others. It's, again, a personal thing. However, it's not as bad as people make it out to be. It is very simply cleaned. It's forgotten about. It's not bad at all. Um, it can be a bit of an adjustment, because at the end of the day, it's gunk. But it's not that bad. I promise you, it's not that bad. <laughs> number seven so traveling now i thought when i first had flow that my life was going to be kind of like completely different in a sense that i wouldn't be able to do as much now i have flown to florida from the uk so that is a nine hour plus flight with flow and she was i don't even think a year old no, I don't even think she was like six months old because I had her placed, had Flo placed on the 21st of August 2019. I went to Florida in the November of 2019. So very soon after, I had no problems whatsoever. I had just had my first tube change. I think my first tube change was like literally less than a week before we flew as well and I had no problems. Um... And I didn't do hiasis back then. However, I didn't really have any issues with spasms in the sense that it was like, oh, I can't do anything. I had different patches, um, which I did stop afterwards. So I'm not going to say their names because I had side effects from them. However, it worked, you know. Um, the thing I did find is when I was in the air, the drainage was definitely a bit slower. But you literally just drink some more. It's not that big of a deal now airport security wise 
honestly, it was the easiest airport security I've ever gone through, which is crazy because it was the one where I had the most issues. <laughs> but I went through the disability side of airport security. Yes, they do exist. And yes, I highly recommend for anyone who's in a wheelchair, who has a super pubic catheter, medical device, all that sort of thing, because they are prepared to deal with that sort of thing. It's not like, oh, oh my God, she's got a catheter. It's kind of like, oh, another one go through <laughs> type thing and I did in my hand luggage bring all my washout bulbs syringes everything I needed to kind of look after flow and they had no issues with it whatsoever everything has to have a label on everything has to be in their sterile packaging anyway so it literally makes no difference and I preferred to have that with me in my hand luggage for the simple fact if my luggage went missing I was not without any medical things I needed. I also had all my medication and stuff with me as well for anyone who's wondering like how that works. Literally it, they have to be closed boxes with your prescription label on them. So just the normal prescription label that you get on the boxes. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else but honestly it was really easy. I am an ambulatory wheelchair user. I did bring my wheelchair and I think we were all gone through within five minutes or so. It was the quickest airport security we've ever been through. Um, now, my family, we have a permanent wheelchair user from CP, which is my brother. My nan and granddad have health conditions as well, ranging from a lung and breast cancer survivor, amongst other things, and someone with per uh, very bad arthritis. So we had, between us, a lot of medication. <laughs> And honestly, we had no problems whatsoever. They looked at it and shimmied the suitcase along. It was that simple. So for anyone who's kind of trying to put off travel, obviously with the um, big C going around, it's not even an option at the minute. But when it's gone, don't be scared to travel because you have a medical device. I say this all the time. Your medical device is not your prison sentence, it's not your death sentence, it is a potential for a whole new lease on life. Now, you just have to take it. There's different things to overcome, but your life has not ended, it's just begun. <laughs> being intimate or doing intimate things with the super pubic catheter now again your life did not end you like nah <laughs> that doesn't just stop unless you want it to obviously um for the most part there's no difference if i'm honest like if anything the biggest difference you're gonna have is body consciousness now which that that is totally normal at the end of the day you have a tube above a very intimate area but your super pubic catheter or your medical device in general does not make you less desirable it does not make you less lovable and it doesn't make you less worthy to have intimate C with anyone or by yourself like your life did not end honestly if you're that worried about it you're worried about it being tugged or anything like that secure it with a catheter securement device I highly recommend Clinifix because they are very small and they're kind of more discreet and you can literally just put your tube up but just remember to take the blue tab off underneath the velcro because it will not secure anything if you don't take that blue tab off I hear this all the time and the people are like well Vic like I don't understand how why you like them it didn't do anything for me there's just a velcro strap because you gotta take the blue bloody tab off like it is there just take it off it's simple once you've done that they're good um, but obviously you can use other things like Ugofix, Statlox, um, you could even use a G-strap which is a strap that goes around your leg if you're interested in all the catheter supplies. I did a my basic catheter, super pubic catheter supplies video which I'll link below. <laughs> now, this is probably the biggest question I'm asked. What does a super pubic catheter look like? Well, now everyone is different. Again, my body is going to be different from yours. Um, just like the placement might be slightly different. Now, maybe in me, <laughs> and anyone who knows me 
personally would laugh at this because this is literally what I'm like 24 7 when I went in to have flow placed and the surgeon came round I said to him right point to me where you're placing it or planning on placing it on my body because I had heard sto horror stories that it was just above a very very intimate area when I say just above I mean which it's not <laughs> um yeah so I, I needed to know for my own peace of mind, which I highly recommend anyone does. Literally, they just put the finger where it's going to be. And, like, that might sound weird, because you're expecting it to be very low, but it's not that low. Now, trigger warning, I am going to paste a picture of Flo. I'm not shy. Um, yeah, I think it's really important to see what a super pubic catheter could look like. Obviously, again, everyone is very different. If you are offended by tubes, this is probably not the channel for you, to be honest. But, yeah, skip. <laughs> because I am going to show flow. So, this is my super pubic after flow. Uh, this is taken two years post-op. Um, so, obviously, I've done a bit of healing. She has changed a little bit. I'll also post a picture of what she looked like two days after placement because you can kind of see the difference. Um, they do change a little bit. Obviously, you might gain granulation tissue uh if you gain or lose weight obviously it changes but yeah this is what my super pubic catheter looks like today and then this is what my super pubic catheter looks like back then if you guys are interested i'll definitely do a what the op was like and after the op um, and I do have pictures of flow from the beginning to now, so you can kind of see all of that. Um, I'll make sure I do a video on that. Another question I'm asked is, what can you wear with a super pubic catheter? Now, this is very easy. You can wear absolutely anything. Again, your life did not end. You don't have to live in certain clothes or certain underwear. If you want to wear the bougiest underwear out there, go for it. You can do it. If you want to wear granny pants, go for it. Comfort comes first. But, yeah, it really doesn't matter. Um, when it comes to dresses and stuff, again, it's your level of confidence that determines what you wear. So, if you are worried about having your super pubic after on display or having a leg bag on display, wear a belly bag or use a flip flow. If you are like me and absolutely nuts and you couldn't care less, use it in a backpack like I do and I'll post a picture of what I mean when I say that. But yeah, again, it's your confident levels, it's what you feel comfortable in. But do not limit yourself if you see a nice dress or if you're a man and you see a nice shorts that you want to wear, but you're like, oh, I've got a comforter no one would want to see that or I, I don't feel comfortable wearing that that's fine but don't limit your life because you have a medical device wear a belly bag is honestly that simple belly bags are very good unless you are instructed not to wear one there is no reason for you not to use them they are brilliant and i will have a video out soon on belly bags because they deserve a video to themselves they are very life-changing for a lot of people who maybe don't have the confidence to rock a leg bag out in the open or like me wear a night bag in a backpack so yeah there is options out there for you right guys that was my short q and a of super pubic catheter and chronic illness questions if you have any more please do leave them below and i will do a second video i hope you enjoyed the video and remember think awareness not attention use a night bag in a backpack 24 7 i'll show you <laughs> or i won't because it's stuck in my bloody chair <laughs> we'll scrap that well done mate